The election also saw a historic move of voters away from the two major parties and towards independents and green candidates who campaigned primarily on a stronger response to the climate crisis. So who are these new so-called teal MPs and what do they mean for Australian politics? Well, the independent MP for Warringah on Sydney's northern beaches is Zali Zdegel. And we can speak to her now. Hello, Zali. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much indeed. And congratulations on winning your election. Oh, thank you. Well, look, it was obviously it was a very big win back in 2019 for me when I beat our ex-Prime Minister, Tony Abbott. And it was a very nice endorsement from my community to be re-elected at this election with a bigger margin. And, and what's your priority? What are the big issues for you that you're going to be pressing this new Labour government? Look, I have very much over the last three years been championing our climate policy and, in fact, put forward a climate change bill that mirrors the Climate Change Act that the UK passed back in 2008 and has been so successful. So I will very much continue to push the government on our climate policy. The Labor government has pledged to be stronger than the coalition, but I would argue is still some way away from really backing the science, which requires at least 50 to 60 percent emissions reduction by 2030. So from my perspective, whilst Anthony Albanese has pledged to do better than Scott Morrison, it's still not good enough for future future generations. And Australia has an incredible opportunity of smart people, technology and opportunity in terms of our re- We must be world leaders when it comes to renewable energy. Yeah, Anthony Albanese has promised to do more to tackle climate change. And he now has not just yourself, but other green members of parliament and other independents who are all going to be pushing him. Do you think that he is going to bring about a significant change of policy when it comes to climate change? Well, look, during the campaign, Labor has pledged to legislate net zero by 2050, and I certainly welcome that. But they still only have a commitment of 43% emissions reduction by 2030, which I would argue compared to yours, you know, the UK is at 68% emission reduction by 2030. So we are well off the mark. But I do acknowledge we've had 10 years of doing nothing. And so Australia has to pick up. But for me, I've entered politics to ensure we have a better future for our children and that we address the challenge of climate change, but also the opportunities. So I will continue to press the government of the day to ensure they put forward much better policies and more ambition when it comes to climate change policy. Remembering, of course, Australia is at the forefront of impacts. So as global warming impacts hit, we have whole East Coast region of Australia is impacted by dramatic floods, bushfires. We really have to transition and build our resilience to ensure we keep our communities safe. Yeah. Do you think those experiences of many voters, as you described the very serious flooding across the east of Australia. We recently had very serious bushfires in other parts of the country. Do you think that that really brought it home to voters that it was time that Australia took action on this? Yeah, look, I think the rise of independent uh, community-backed independent members And we're talking, also importantly, the gender story. We have a huge rise of professional women entering our federal politics backed by their communities. So I would argue this is a huge vote where a huge tranche of the population has said we've had enough with the two-party system. We think traditional party politics is broken. We need to look outside the box for a more competitive and a more progressive and a more real style of politics, which is backed by communities. And I think that's why you've seen so many independent professional women be successful. And I think this is only a good thing for our democracy to have more competition. I think much better gender equity is going to bring about better decisions and a better discourse and more respectful politics because obviously Australia has also been very rocked with, you know, gender and respect issues in our politics and very serious allegations. Yeah, indeed. And Scott Morrison's handling of some of those allegations were one of the factors which cost him quite a bit of support. Do you think having not just yourself, but a a number of other women MPs, independent women MPs, 
is going to bring about a bit of a shift in the culture of Australia's politics, which is still seen, frankly, as rather a rather macho one. Yes, look, it's a very patriarchal and I would say very toxic masculine culture has permeated in Australian politics and that absolutely must change. I think Australian women have called time on that and with the election of so many very credible, very credentialed, you know, professional women, we're talking CEOs, doctors, award-winning journalists, so incredibly successful in their own right. I do very much think this will bring about a change to our politics and the culture in Parliament and really move our democracy forward, which I would argue is long overdue, but communities have finally really said enough's enough and let's move, move on on these big issues because I think as a country it's really time we address the challenges. And just very briefly, I know you're a former Olympic medalist at alpine skiing. <laughs> I mean, perhaps you learned some of your the resilience that you need for politics there. Look, yes, I did represent Australia at four Winter Olympics and, and won this first, first medal, individual medal for Australia at the Winter Olympics. So, look, I definitely, I'm used to doing it in slightly odd circumstance and I'm not afraid of a challenge. And that's what so many of these women are showing. We are up for the challenge and we absolutely can do better. Okay. I will provide all the support I can. Great to talk to you. Independent MP for Warringah.